HIV, or human immunodeficiency virus, was first identified by researchers at the Pasteur Institute in France. For many years after... It was considered a death sentence or almost like an incurable end that you're going to be faced with. Despite what some articles may claim, that's no longer the case. And a lot of times the things that are seen in media or online are a lot of older, dated ideologies and information that just is not relevant. In February of 2022, a U.S. patient with leukemia became the first woman and the third person to date to be cured of HIV. The story behind her cure is similar to Timothy Ray Brown, who in 2007 was the first person to be free of the virus. They wound up doing a stem cell transplant or bone marrow transplant in the in the Samaritan in Germany and wound up repeating testing for HIV levels later on and found that his immunity had returned to normal levels. In the case of the middle-aged woman, they used umbilical cord blood to treat her acute myeloid leukemia. According to Dr. Nistico, the stem cell transplant reapply or, or give a new immune system, which is where that bone marrow or stem cell transplant comes in, and then the patient is start off like resetting their entire uh, immune system. So that HIV, if it was latched on to something in particular or some reservoir, may not necessarily exist or be able to survive through that process. Despite the cure not being available to most HIV patients, those who test positive have options to manage the virus. Three different types of medications are now approved by the FDA for use, two pills and one injectable medication. People can live with HIV without making drastic changes to their professional, social, or romantic lifestyles. When, when people are diagnosed or have had the condition and they're very uh, much good about taking medication and undetectable, transmission rates plummet. They don't exist anymore. And so those individuals can carry on normal relationships with others. They can carry also on just knowing that, you know, spreading the virus is not like, oh, I, 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 I kissed someone on the cheek. I hand shook somebody. It's not the way the virus works. If a person believes they've had sexual contact with someone who's HIV positive, there are preventative medical treatments they can take after exposure to prevent an infection from occurring. Pet. PEP, which kind of stands for post-exposure prophylaxis, and post being after you may have been exposed, or if you think you've been exposed recently. And that can be received at um, any emergency department. And for those who have sexual partners who maybe are HIV positive, there are options to take prescription medication every day before coming into contact with HIV to help reduce the risk of getting it. And going off of that, it's just a discussion of whether or not something like PrEP would benefit them in their life. Doctors aim to treat people so their HIV status is undetectable and subsequently untransmissible. It means that their rate of transmission is though you've never even had HIV. So it's kind of the transmission rate at that time is good enough to say if someone is undetectable in a consecutive pattern of several months, that their transmission rates are that of those who don't have HIVs. According to Dr. Nistico, less virus means less transmission and minimal to no infections. A cure could lower the chances of people testing positive and lead to easier discussions about the virus. Hopefully we can get to a point where it is a conversation that is not as difficult to have because of the treatment and cures that could be available. Scientists may not yet have a cure for all HIV patients, but it's important to keep in mind that in many cases, once the HIV is controlled, your immune system stays, it stays healthy and you can live a very long, healthy life. For Ornit Health, I'm Lexi Cutmore.